Hey y'all, it's Shana here. Let's talk about uh, season three, episode four of BMF. Y'all, I think we building up for some mess. Let's get into it. So we know Mish is down in Atlanta. He got his connect, he got his plug, but he can't speak Spanish and they can barely speak English. So it's a lot of language barriers going on around here. <laughs> Yet they finding ways to connect. But Mish, if you're gonna be down there, and they speaking in Spanish, you got to learn how to speak. So you need to get some Rosetta Stone going or something because, you know, the communication ain't flowing like it need to flow. Basically, he thought he was supposed to have 250 bricks that he was going to have to uh, go back to Detroit to get and, you know, distribute it, take it wherever he got to take it. So he get, he come back to the D because he was like, I'm going to send Terry to do it. And they was like, no, we don't like Terry. And at this point, who likes Terry? Nobody really likes Terry. I don't even really think Markeisha likes Terry. I don't think nobody likes Terry. The only person who really likes Terry is Lawanda, and that's the one he treat like dirt. Anyway, he come back to the D. We finally see him talking to Zoe and one of his his kids. I'm like, we ain't seen him interacting with his children. No, he got another one he need to go visit. But I digress. <laughs> so he get there. You know, he making his rounds. Everybody happy to see him. T ain't happy to see him because he a hater and he know nobody really respect him. Everybody disrespect Mish. And Mish really need to be running the show from every city. Like, he need to do it. When it comes down to the talking, Terry don't need to do none of it, okay? Terry feel like Mish moving these bricks is too risky. Mish don't need got no driver's license. Like, why are you feeling comfortable driving state to state like this? Mish is like, this is a good business deal. Like, and I'm thinking long term. You're thinking short term. I'm thinking I'm playing a long game. That's why we're not the same. That's why Terry got the whole operation shut down. But I I'm going to leave it alone. Okay. <laughs> So when Mish gets to the destination, the pilot was like, no, it's 250. Was it, I think it was like 2,500 or 250,000. Lord, it was a lot of bricks, okay? Mish was, <laughs> Mish was like, how am I supposed to distribute this all? Terry got to come in and help. They're like, look, we got to get this out right away. We're going to have to cut the price in half. We're going to lose on profit, but we're going to gain long term. So that's what we're doing. We got to get this done. We cannot disappoint. So he figured out like, how am I, he got this little, he got a coupe. A Mercedes Benz coupe. He can't. And, and the pilot like, and look, and I need to ride to the hotel as well. So you got to fit me and all these bricks in a vehicle. So Mish finds some guy with a white, white van working in the back. He asks him like, listen, you want to make extra money? And the dude was like, I'm good. And Mish is like, look, money talk. So can I use your van for the night? I'll bring it back. And then he was like, you ain't seen me, right? And the guy was like, seen who? I know that's right. Okay, period. Now, the whole time me trying to get this this whole situation situated, Detective Brian is on his behind, okay, his ASS, because he don't got nothing else better to do. Plus, he working with Henrietta, and, you know, we can't stand her, but he working with her anyway. Henrietta told uh, Detective Brian to stay on top of Mish and Terry. They need to get the operation shut down. So her father, who's also a dirty cop, will finally respect her. Child, if he don't respect you by now, he just ain't going to. She want to be head of the operation. And she got some childhood issues. But that's neither here nor there. Detective Brian, like, look, I got to get a little Kevin out of there. Okay, he lost his spark. He lost his coloring book. He's down bad. I got to do what I got to do. Plus, his badge already got took. So, I mean, what else could he lose? Speaking of Detective Brian, he went to go visit Detective Jen. And he like, look, I want to make sure you was all right. And she like, F you. I still don't F with you. And he was like, and she like, and when I find out what you got going on, I'm going to snitch. And he like, you better not snitch because, you know, we, we, we got dirty activity going on together. Both our hands are dirty. And she said, I cleaned out those bricks. When I found those bricks underneath that, um, you know, old boy's bed, that's what she took. I was wondering what she took that for. She's like, I took it and I replaced the old synthetic fake bricks with the real one. So I'm good. My hands is clean. And he's like, that's what you think. But just know I'm doing this for Kevin. She don't want to hear that. She don't care about you. So Mish had to take all the bricks into this white van one by one. The pilot ain't helping him. He eating his chips like, oh, well, this ain't my problem. I did my job. So Mish got it done and he driving, he driving the pilot and the pilot like, stop right here. I got to go to the bathroom. And then I see police and I said, oh, Lord, I was sweating bullets just like Mish. Mish looked like he just got out the hot tub. Okay. He looked like he was in a sauna. 
sweating so bad, and I don't blame him. And Detective Ryan pulled right up. So he there, the police walking in there. I don't know what the hell they in. It looks suspicious. So Meech looking, he don't know what to do. He got to wait on this pilot. And we see the pilot talking to the police. And I said, either he about to snitch on Meech or he working to get the police up off the ass, okay? And that's exactly what he did. He was like, look, the pilot was like, look, I had to pour it on thick. Just watch, watch what they about to do. So they look, they go to Detective Brian's old raggedy station wagon and was like, we heard you was following these people. That, that pilot said you trying to rob him. They see a pow pow, a pew pew in the car. Child threw him every which away up against the car. Now he know how I feel to be on the other side. He's like, I'm a cop. I just don't got my badge. Well, baby, you ain't no cop and they don't want to hear it. Okay, they gave you opportunity to show your badge and you don't got one. He really got it out now because he already blaming Misha Terry for the reason why his son is behind bars when it's his fault. Chow. Henrietta heard the news that Detective Ryan ain't answering her phone and she's pissed. I think she gonna redirect her energy from Terry over to Detective Ryan to get him down first. So, ooh, he in a tough pickle right now and he ain't gonna get that money for little Kevin. Cynthia Bailey gonna have to work extra shifts. So Misha and Terry got the job done. Good job, guys. <laughs> Thumbs up. And now, uh, Terry had his own thing going on though. CPS, he got that CPS case. Even me talking about, I think Markeisha behind it. Like, why does everybody think Markeisha's behind it? He said that Henrietta is his enemy. Why do y'all not think she's behind it? Or anybody else who don't like Terry, which is a lot of people. However, Markeisha did her big one and she worked with this dirty judge who she got dirt on and used to help her husband and all that stuff. And when is she going to file for divorce? Like, this is getting crazy. Now, this, on, this is just a side note. Markeisha, who was really Tonasia, was supposed to be 27 and Terry's supposed to be 18. Lala looks 67 up in here. What is going on? She look older than she look in real life. Is it the makeup? Why does she look so seasoned? I know they want to give her cool girl aesthetic, but Lord, Lord. Because even when they was at the gambling spot and they uh, Markeisha and Terry pulled up on the judge and then here go Henrietta and she like, what you doing with this little bad weather? <laughs> I can, I do not want to be that the woman, you know, on my Drea Michelle walking around and say, what you doing with this little boy who's still at the bed? What are you doing with this young man? What are you doing? Blink twice, Terry, if you need help. <laughs> <laughs> with this old seasoned cat that you can't let go of. But, you know, Terry was so thankful. That's the least she can damn do. I mean, I'm saying she's living in your house. You got to go get another house. And Lawanda's still technically living with her mama while pregnant with your second child. And Markeisha and her kids put up. Help me to understand how that makes sense. He got his nose wide open. Meech got his nose wide open too, though, because you know he loved to save a pro. He loved to put his cape on and save him if he don't do nothing else. But Terry had to tell Markeisha thanks, but um, Nikki, she made dinner. Nicole made dinner for the family. Misha's back in town. So I'm spending tonight with my family. And she's talking about you, you supposed to be the boss. Misha don't run nothing. And that's why I don't like her. What are you talking about? He said he eating dinner with his family and you got mad. Like Terry, this is the woman for you. This is the girl of your dreams. Child. Or is she mad because Lawanda going to be there? Or is she mad because she the same age as his mama? Which one is it? Meanwhile, Lucille over there trying to get birth control on the low for Nikki, who ain't even doing nothing. Nikki went off at dinner. She was like, oh, yeah, huh, this is for me to go off. And y'all always go down at the dinner table. She talking about me. She got two baby mamas. Terry got a second baby on the way. He ain't even legal drinking age. And meanwhile, he messing with an old cougar cat. Luanda sitting here playing the fool. Uh, my daddy cheated. And now y'all getting divorced. You making googly eyes at the doctor. And Lucille was like, that's why I draw the line when you exposing me. Go to your room. She said, gladly. But Nikki ended up telling me, she's like, I'm not even over the fact that my my last boyfriend got off because of y'all and y'all dirty activities. And now you, they worrying about me being with somebody else. Like, give me time. And I said, they never did really let that girl grieve. And I don't like that. But Nicole was been, she looked like she was being a little fresh. But Lucille, that ain't the way to do it. You pushing the girl away. You got your own problems. Meanwhile, one minute man cheat cheating Charles finally getting some work done around the house. Took him a hundred years to fix up these walls and get some paint on them walls. He working out getting Lucille all hot and bothered. She is, you know, it's desert, the Sahara Desert down there. But she really wants that doctor. She find any reason to go to that doctor's office. Do y'all think Lucille and the doctor gonna go all the way? Or you think she gonna take cheap cheating Charles back? 
I think a woman's fed up and she, I don't know, she gonna step out, but she might. <laughs> Drop down in the comments.